What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the True Church of Jesus Christ with His Latter-day Saint, sitting in time and space, full of it, praising the Lord for those that have keep filling them up on a daily basis in the maintenance feature of the Lord. We're asking, seeking, and knocking, Lord, what are we doing here? And the Lord keeps kicking me away and says, I give you too much transcendental knowledge. Shut it up and pray more. <laughs> so that's what we do on this path. And in today's video, at least in this session right here, we're going to uh, sit in with the Nectaria knowledge of the spiritual master. That we could actually get more of an apprehension of what we're praying to, what we're praying for, why we're praying, why we even are on this path to begin with. Not only just for enhanced consciousness, God consciousness, but also for the Lord's eternal life. So I'll preach more about that as well too, because it is in scripture of what the word of God is, what it entails and also God's plan, you could say on an individual level, is uh, plucking out that evil or that death, the contaminated consciousness from the three modes of material nature, mundane good, passions and ignorance, the false ego, the one that identifies with the flesh, and that basically it, God is plucking and remo removing, and that's the mystical process of self-realization. So it's all done by the hand of God, all done by prayer and meditation and your relationship with God. That's what being reborn in the spirit means. Uh, basically taking the, or casting off the mortal and into the immortal. And it's a process, a process that we go through. At the opening video anyways, when I preach the scriptures, that's also the process of self-realization. So we'll get to it before we actually get into more of the Nectarian knowledge of the spiritual master. Is we'll go to uh, uh, we start off here with John, might as well, John two, uh, chapter two. Sorry, John one, chapter two, verse fifteen is have no love for the world, nor the things that the world affords. If anyone loves the world, the Father's love has no place in him. For nothing that the world affords comes from the Father. Carnal allurements, enticements for the eye, the life of empty show, all these are from the world. And the world with its seductions is passing away. This is also gearing us towards God's new kingdom, the new Jerusalem, the new plan of the Lord, recreating creation. All the transcendental qualities of God's scriptures that aren't really taught in the world. Yes, the old world is being replaced by God's new kingdom. So the man who does God's will endures forever. And also being on this path, one will if one is looking for wholeness and harmony, God's the only love. God's the only one that actually can release the knots of material suffering, both in mind and in the heart. And uh, that's also a process. If God can trust you with his light, he'll give you that cut of the knot. So he will relieve the suffering in one's life if one is or going through uh, material pangs and pleasures, if you will. It, it works both the same way. Suffering... I mean, people don't really realize that being material, materially good is suffering as well. They don't realize that keeping up with the Joneses and getting themselves involved in just purely economic, economic advancement and just material consciousness, that's also the, you're going to feel the suffering of that as well. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 is to test yourselves to see whether you're living by the faith. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, uh, live to the best of God's ways to the best of your ability day by day building up the knowledge and the faith to follow that not taking thought and realizing that the great spirit of God the great I am is within you examine yourselves perhaps you don't realize that Jesus Christ is in you the great I am unless of course you've failed the challenge I hope some of you have known that we have not failed the Lord's challenge it is true he was crucified out of weakness but he lives by the power of God we too are weak in him but we live with him by God's power in us. So that's basically by prayer and meditation and not taking thought for your life. Living by faith, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 16. We do not lose heart because our inner being is renewed each day, even though our body is being destroyed at the same time. The present burden of our trial is light enough and earns us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. <laughs> so I'll get into preaching that. We do not fix our gaze on what is seen, but what is invisible. What is seen is just transitory, just the marionette show. And what is invisible, unseen, lasts forever. 
So we'll get into this reasoning why you would want to be under God and follow his word and follow the way. What is it the way to? Well, as Jesus Christ says, it's the way to immortal life, eternal life. And that's the religion of old. That's what men of old have killed themselves for. That's what everyone has died in the past for. You know, that's basically what uh, enlightenment is, following religion. It's not just being a sick, sad, you know, <laughs> depressed, downtrodden mortal that's looking for God to, you know, heal him or something like that as well, too. There is a lot of healing grace with God. But at the same time, it, it's God has more of a plan for creation and more about transforming your individual being into his image and likeness as well. So we're not just sick, sad, depressed mortals on this path. What we are is seeking God, his kingdom, and his promises. God's word, and the, like you know how someone gives you their word of promise? God's word of promise is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And there it is in John chapter 6. I could preach a lot of it, but... Uh, We'll say verse 37, we'll start there. All that the Father gives me shall come to me. No one who comes to me I will ever reject. So people, it doesn't matter who you are. That's what, this message is for everybody. He won't reject you. That's what he says. It is not to do my will that I've come down from heaven, but to do the will of him who sent me. So this is all God's will. It's the will of him that I should lose nothing of what he's given to me. Rather, I should raise it up on the last day. So he's talking about God's judgment day, his religion as well. Indeed, this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks upon the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, the Holy Grail. This is what God's religion is, and raising him up on the last day. So this is all about the judgment day of the Lord as well. Eternal life in believing in his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. So you don't have to drink the elixir of immortality you don't have to you don't have to do anything actually <laughs> because it's the great it's the you receive the gift by grace that's why more that's why it tells you not to take thought because it's all done by the grace of god you can't what are you going to do for god's immortal life that's why brother paul says about the law what are you going to do follow the ten commandments good luck if you can't do that the rest of your days you know well, here's an example like my, my father pretty much never he's you know he's Italian he's he's pretty much Jewish <laughs> in God's book he, he never he, he did all the Ten Commandments I never seen him with idolatry engraven image so that's the second commandment you know he never walked around with crosses or any symbols or anything like that never murdered cheated lied stole uh, he didn't commit adultery with against my mother or anything like that so by observance of the Ten Commandments, you know, dedicating your life to the law, that's what Brother Paul means. The reward is eternal life. That's what you get. <laughs> you get that in God's transcendental kingdom for following the law on earth. But through Jesus Christ, you see, you don't have to, you can't, none, none of your dead works, as it says in the Bible. So your dead works means following the law, because now... The new testimony of Jesus Christ doesn't abolish the law like he says. He came to fulfill the law of the prophets, which is indeed all the prophecies that the prophets have spoken of, because he spoke of God's judgment day, as well as the word being fulfilled. So preaching the eternal life only through him, only through the Son of God, only through the word. Not by uh, the Ten Commandments anymore. So that's why there's a lot of, uh, you know, dissension amongst him and the Jewish people because he preached things that no man has ever said like that one there too <laughs> and John 6 what man has ever said yeah you believe in me you just gain eternal life Who's, if you give me someone that said that well, well that's what following the way is yeah everyone wants eternal it's not living forever in this material plane if you haven't noticed See, that's God's transcendental kingdom, is to believe in the prophets. Book 2 of Ezra, God made two kingdoms, this world and the kingdom of God. Seek, that's why Matthew chapter 6, the way to God is straight and narrow, not taking thought. 
And that also means uh, following just a straight path between good and evil, you could say, because that's man's contaminated consciousness from the three modes of material nature, passions, ignorance, and good. He has to follow the straight way, which is the invisible, not taking thought anymore, and doing that. See, that's what the Tao means. If you do that for 70 years, well, guess what? You become, you're, that's what enlightenment means. That's the whole goal of creation. Let's put it this way. No one has been born and said, this is like the instruction manual for creation. This is what you're supposed to do in time and space. And what you're supposed to do is live this way until time and space, this creator, makes itself known to you, which is known as spiritual enlightenment. And once you live, like uh, Lao Tzu, in his way, say they dedicated 60, 70 years. Confucius, 60 years until it spoke to him. But with the new testimony of Jesus Christ, especially in Doctrines and Covenants, God says that the harvest is uh, ripe and ready for anyone to thrust in their sickle and reap. And basically what that means is now's the time for the study and the application it's so easy to do it around this time that enlightenment is it's an easier process than it's ever been before like you don't have to live through like a hundred million lifetimes like the buddha says or even 70 lifetimes one can get enlightenment in this life in a matter of months weeks it depends how much you thrust your sickle and at the same time, there's so much knowledge in the world that you can study and, de and devote and dedicate this time. That's what life is all about. That's what the old religion was, is dedicating yourself to the way until creation makes itself known to you. That means, bravo, you've passed creation. This is what you're supposed to do in time and space. And God made itself known to you to congratulate you and say thank you for following the way and now your immortal, eternal soul was with me in my kingdom. That's what the Tao means. <laughs> so it's not like Confucius. He didn't preach like a way afterwards. He just preached the way to God. See, that's where more of the Orient, deeper into it. We get into the Indian philosophy. It's not a philosophy. Bhagavad Gita. The, the, the spirit of God had there told us to seek the kingdom of God. That's where you're going. That's the ultimate destination for all mystical processes, all mystical forms of meditation lead to this transcendental kingdom of God. It, that's like the deduction of all the logical sage uh, uh, knowledge of accumulation over time and reasoning is that you might be elevated into higher states of consciousness or higher states of existence. See, that's all the knowledge of old and being elevated into the kingdom or different kingdoms, heavenly planets. But the ultimate is God's kingdom, seeking the kingdom of God, the transcendental new Jerusalem, this kingdom that never perishes, it never dies. It, it, it's its own mystical kingdom. And that's what men of old, that's the goal of life, to get into this mystical transcendental kingdom. And that's God's religion. I mean, it, it didn't change. God, as it says, even in Bhagavad Gita, God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And God's function is the same, even with Jesus Christ. Seek the kingdom of God and God's transcendental kingdom. And this is the way to do it. <laughs> See, that's why John chapter 4, seeking the worshippers. Worship now is transforming your thoughts and your feelings and your actions into acquiring or being on the path. And uh, long story short, the gospel I mean, if you follow Matthew chapter 6, day in and day out, that's your workout regimen, not taking thought. And within your own inner being of praying, that's what you pray for, is light. Lord, what is this transcendental kingdom? Can you show me this light? Can you show me this way? And that you sit there and you pray until God makes itself known to you. You know, it's not going to last like 70 years, like days of old. We're very lucky and fortunate in this day and age that God is merciful and will give you enlightenment and the knowledge of his transcendental kingdom in shorter span of time than men of old in the Orient. And even in doctrines and covenants, God wants us to walk the old way. He wants us to walk the void. And that's a very mysterious thing in itself. 
What's a void? That's for you to actually walk. <clears throat> no modern man knows what a void is. You're not going to hear it from any modern thinker, philosopher, no one. They, they're all, see, this is what happens when man gradually falls into the material consciousness. He loses the actual spirit. He loses the transcendental qualities that's in existence. These things are mysterious, but they can be uh, made known and contacted by your individual self. That was the whole goal of religion. That's the whole goal of the Oriental philosophy is to, to, to come in contact with the void. That's enlightenment. That's the spirit. That's the spirit of God and Jesus Christ is the void. And there's a way to do it. And in that void is the passage to God's mystical kingdom. God's mystical kingdom was not preached in the Orient. That's what they lost. They just know this quote unquote way, kind of like the yellow brick road, but they don't know where the yellow brick road leads to. See, they lost that teaching once the Buddha came down and preached ill religion. <laughs> he preached against the Vedas. And the Vedas tell you that you're going to the kingdom of God. <laughs> it's not like a, it's a, it's a secret, but it's not like a secret in the, in the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad, like the first couple chapters, it's like right there. All paths lead to the kingdom of God. They knew where you're going after you quote unquote leave this human scene or die. And it's not death what you are is a, you're, you're since you're devoted to the spirit of god a devotee of the lord your consciousness doesn't die <laughs> you as it says just like god created man in his image and likeness you, you don't die now what you are now is a, awake and alive and now you're guided by the spirit of god back into his transcendental kingdom where you don't <laughs> That's the mystical path and the mystical truth of life. That it, it's been preached so much in God's, like you could say, the Old and the New Testament, especially by the prophets. Book two of Ezra is the biggest thing I've ever read in my life about God's transcendental kingdom and what's happening on this earth and God's plan. Ezra the prophet... That's why the Jews called him the son of God, because he was revealed just the most ridiculous revelation of all time. And that's God's plan. God made two kingdoms and for us to seek the kingdom of God. And here's the way Jesus Christ, his transcendental word. So we're going to uh, sit in more with the spiritual master and he's going to tell us a little bit about getting into this way. You know that the infinite way is a presentation of certain principles of revealed truth. Do you know that a commercial? Overcome? Not in these lectures. Oh, they, these are unadulterated. I guess not. Those principles, as long as they remain in a book. How dare you interrupt the spiritual dactarian knowledge of the master? Literature than uh, those miracle working statements that are to be found in the scripture of all people. As long as scripture remains beautiful passages in literature, they are nothing more nor less than comforts to you or to me. But it, and we can't have comforts, especially like when you're going through the Job experience, you know, when you're begging for your life and you're wondering why life is so crap and Every, life took a giant turd on you and then what that's that's what also Bhagavad Gita says so now the devotee kind of like Job right Job was a, a really good devotee because he didn't go towards his uh, sensual desires Bhagavad Gita teaches that lesser men like Job when they go through the trials all they their mind is just geared towards sense gratification uh, so that's why the uh, Orient was so, uh, you could say, expounded more on the sub-religious principles, which is the suffering of man going through these miserable states of creation. So even Bhagavad Gita says that men, you know, they, they are just so full of sense gratification when they, misery comes about. So like Job, he was still determined in inquiring about God. That's what was very different about Job. He wasn't like a regular man. 
He was a righteous man that still had his relationship with God, even though he was going through the trials. But like, you know, most people are not devoted to the Lord. And then when they go through the trials, uh, Bhagavad Gita clearly says that the contaminated consciousness just goes towards sense gratification. Especially men are just hungry for women. So <laughs> when dudes suffer, their only remedy to counteract their suffering is uh, sex. And that's pretty much it. If guys can't get sex, then there's other things that gratify the mind, like gambling or alcohol or drugs. See, it's easier for some of these individuals to get their hands on these certain things rather than the hands on a woman. So that's why alcohol is a little bit more prone to be abused. Because you can just walk into a, you can't just walk into a store and grab a stripper. You can go to the store and grab a, 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 some booze, though. In different parts of the world, you can go out and, and grab a, a girl and gratify your senses. But like the Buddha says, all you're doing is just being involved in maya, the illusion. And when you're involved in the illusion, especially now you're creating a karma for yourself where you're just trying to gratify this burning, you know, suffering, this lust through this avenue of the material world. And it could be by a woman anyways. So God is the only, see, he didn't, see, that's why he preached against the Vedas as well. He didn't preach in the spirit of God. He basically said that your own ego can get you out of these miserable states. And that's not the truth. That's why he preached against the Vedas. Uh, the spirit of God is the only thing, the word of God now, we've been given the new testimony. Uh, that is the only thing that absolves, uh, you could say, contaminated consciousness, fear, anxiety, that's the only, traveling the way one will begin to free themselves out of this mortal contamination or this mortal mind. And most people in the world don't have a remedy. All they have is just some things of this world. And it's not going to help them. The, the, the burning sensations of the heart are always going to be agitated. You know, the, the agitation, the lamentation, the fear, the anxiety. You know, there's no pill in the world that's going to get rid of that. No psychologist. The only thing is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the only one that's going to help heal, reform, maintain, and sustain. That's its activity and function. That's the function of transcendental consciousness. That's why it was preached as a benefit towards man. And, but uh, in the past, that's why Lao Tzu, he says and warns that in order to become whole, you need to be broken. So some men interpreted the Spirit of God as something evil because they would have these uh, trials like Job uh, put upon them. But again, it's God trying to pluck out the evil, the darkness out of all of our consciousness. As you can see in the beginning of the story, Job wasn't terrified, but fear still lurks in everyone's consciousness, fear and death. And that has to be confronted. And God is making us confront it in this life face to face with his spirit. He's trying to take out and remove and dissolve that death anyway. So that's why the story of Job is very important. We, you know, you will go through, as the master says, suffering, pain, but only through his spirit will you overcome because that's what the word of God did, his devotional service by coming down and going through the sacrifice, going through the crucifixion. He went through the suffering. He overcame death. That's why through his spirit and spiritual consciousness is kind of like being with the uh, We'll, we'll talk about like a mundane experience, like kind of like just a human experience, right? Like when you're around your friends, you feel happy, safe, or whatever. When you meditate and pray, you come to me, Matthew 11, and it, this peace now descends upon you. That's spiritual consciousness, and you can rely on that until God really reveals itself to you. But you have to practice this because at the same time, you can't fool yourself. That's why it tells us to practice, uh, you could say, avoiding like sense gratification. And here's an example. Now you're hanging out with your friends, right? And you have a good time, so you go home. And now you, you want to pray. And you, you get into like the atmosphere of praying, you think. And then you think that everything is good, right? You know, you just had a good time with your friends. But that atmosphere of the material nature that was with your friends is still with you in that consciousness while you're praying. So the outer world and its residue is still with you, you could say, that residue of a good time. So while you're praying, you could feel peace and you could get tricked into thinking that the peace that you're feeling is the peace from the Spirit of God. 
And that's not the truth. You have to discern the spiritual activity and basically your material mundane consciousness. There is a difference. This is why it tells us to practice, you could say, disengaging from the senses, especially sense gratification, making yourself happy, making yourself peaceful by these things of the world, like hanging out with friends or family or, or having, you know, like a lot of money in your bank account. Those can give peace and security. So how can you tell that the spirit of God is with you while you're having peace from the world? So that's why it tells us to practice, not necessarily sense deprivation, but to practice deny yourself. So we can put more of our faith and not only that, come into the awareness of the spirit of God. That's what we're in here for. And the only ticket for salvation is coming into the actual contact with the spirit of God. And long story short, how could you know that? When you had an evening of sense gratification with your girlfriend, especially, you know, what if you made love that night and now you want to get into the atmosphere of prayer? Well, that whole evening of being good, see, that that's just material good. And material good can cloud one from actual grace and, God, and spirit of God. You have to discern God's peace and basically the things that the world can give you. And that comes with practice. God will, as it says in, uh, the, the teachings of the gospel, you'll be poured out like the wine bottle. You have to make yourself empty or else you'll never come into the apprehension or the scientific apprehension of the spirit of God anyways, because you'll be confused about this mundane good and the sensations of this world as well. Bhagavad Gita is very good at telling us the way as well too. You could say some of the requirements. Uh, living in a, a secluded, solitude life is like that for a reason practicing celibacy is for a reason as well too it's not because these things are evil or the world's evil it's just the senses can't be engaged too much you can't engage in excitement or even just like a, a pleasure like eating a popsicle and finding sense gratification out of that you have to restrict and control the mind and the senses in order to really tell the atmosphere of the spirit as well so that's just another thing behind the spirit and the science of God that our teacher here unveils as well. To any individual in the world. When, however, we embody one of the principles shown forth in scripture, then we are living that scripture. We ourselves become living scripture, living principles of life. It is only then that one can say with the master, I am the way, I am the truth, I am life eternal. You actually become the very embodiment of... Now, in order to see, that's like what he said there. Let me put that into perspective for you. That's just like going to the gym and you're like, a, you know, been, th been there for like two or three months. And now you could bench press. You're going up to the bench press and you're benching 300 pounds. To say that I am the father or one is... Uh, planting the seeds of God. So that's Matthew chapter 13. But until God makes itself known to you, that's when some of these deeper scriptures could, you, you could actually like relate yourself to. That's what he means by becoming living scripture because God will reveal these things to you anyways. And that's when you get to say, I and the Father are one. But right now you can't. The only thing you could say to yourself honestly is that you're a seeker of God and God's this is the path that God will make itself known one day. So you don't, you, to, to run around and say some of these, you know, bulletproof uh, Bible phrases for yourself, like John Jones and, Ch and, and uh, uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. No, you can't. Only if God reveals itself to you. See, that's, that's more like not playing the game, not understanding the levels of the game as well, too. You know, that's just like the newbie going to the gym and thinking he could bench press 300 pounds. Yeah, he, good luck. There is people online that do that. You can see that they're choking underneath the bar or they hurt themselves. And walking around in life, uh, you know, thinking about these higher Bible phrases, while well, you don't have that consciousness. See, that can also be detrimental and hurtful to you as well. Just because you might not have the apprehension uh, doesn't mean, it's like fake it till you make it kind of. But 
understand that there is levels to the game too. You have to have the apprehension in order to say some of these things as well. So, you know, one day it, it might be good to aspire to bench press 300 pounds, but note that it's not going to be done overnight. You're going to have to spend time. So just like some of these deeper uh, phrases that we get from Jesus Christ, uh, I wouldn't be saying any of those unless God revealed itself to you and you have the confidence now because of your rep, because of what God revealed to you anyways. You know, so that's another thing. You can take in the seeds from the spiritual teacher, but until you've been revealed, I, 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 he, he, he's like Wayne Gretzky. You can't do the things Wayne Gretzky does. He's the teacher for a reason. And all you are is just a little branch, hoping that you'll bear any fruit. So that's the thing too. Uh, you got to make sure that you're firmly rooted with this branch of the teach or the tree of the teacher, or else you know what? That's the thing too about flopping back and forth with teachers. Uh, you don't want to do that. But not by reading it. Reading it is only a step leading to embodying it, realizing it, achieving experience. The consciousness years of after it. years after years, the consciousness of it. That we start. Very good, teacher. With uh, what is undoubtedly one of the most astonishing revelations of all time. It is uh, the Master's revelation that I and the Father are one. Thou seest me, thou seest the Father that seest. Thou seest me. Thou seest the Father that sent me. Now, like, he's really saying that these revelations that Jesus Christ gave us are groundbreaking. Now, you don't really hear these things in the world. He's right. That's the thing with this teaching. Uh, these whole videos that I make and stuff like that, this is like a groundbreaking teaching that I've been taught, you could say, rigorously for the past six or seven years. And this is the fruit of of being on that rigorous path for about six or seven years. So I didn't open up my big mouth, you know, many moons ago and start making videos anyways, because I wasn't ready. So that's another thing too, with just holding on to knowledge, learning, and just basically eating those fruits first and not sharing with anybody, making sure that, like he says, these aren't just quotations. These are acquired states of consciousness. <laughs> and until you acquire those states of consciousness, then you could actually bring it forth to the world and say, God's promises are true because that's the whole goal of the Lord. And that's what has been revealed to us, not just by hearsay. You know, that's a, a you could say a fact in the world, like going to the gym and then becoming some, you know, like the art of uh, whatever appearance you want to be. It's going to take five or six years, but there's a way to do it and a way to accomplish it. We could say like the, even being a doctor or a lawyer, in order to get that way, you got to follow this way. And it's a rigid process. And it's, a, it's something you acquire. It's the same thing with God. It's something you acquire in this life as well. And one thing that I've been meditating on at the same time, it's things that the world can't give you. The, the world, no matter where you go, can't give you spiritual consciousness. Those things come from above, as God says. So some things in this world you can only obtain through your individual consciousness anyways. You can't obtain it in the world. They're impossible to obtain. Like the Holy Grail. Where are you going to get that in the world? The only way you can get it is your individual consciousness and your relationship with God. Now, in that language, uh, those passages are meaningless in our world. We just do not seem able with our language to encompass the meaning of those passages. And so, in the infinite way, it is presented in this wise. God is individual being. God is individual being. Another so, commercial. Wow, the blasphemy today. God is your being. God is my being. God is the being of every individual on the face of the globe. Human, animal, vegetable, mineral. 
God is individual being. God is the law, the life, the soul, the spirit of individual being. And therefore, all that God is, I am. All that the Father hath is mine. Now, a very important fact to say about that, too, is it is preached, I think, in Luke uh, 15, where the Master says, The Lord thy God is one. Love the Lord thy God and love thy neighbor as thyself. As you can see, those commandments are rooted in the one consciousness. That's why it's a commandment of the one consciousness, and that's the principles behind oneness is love. But love, the first commandment, now don't get it misconstrued. It's your individual being, love yourself. And that's a hard thing to do. It was a hard thing to do for me. But once you start doing that, that's not loving yourself. It's loving God. And then you could share that second commandment with somebody else because now you're reborn in this consciousness, being reborn in the water and the spirit. We have the love of God now. And what he's trying to say is, too, uh, this is a very important thing that the Bhagavad Gita says, which also elevates consciousness, is to realize that the one consciousness in me is the one consciousness in you. Uh, a cost is sukas or whatever they say. And that's uh, what God wants you to worship in truth and in spirit. Now, it goes by extremes as well. I could give you an example of like a serial killer. You still have to acknowledge that principle that <laughs> the I in me is the I in him. And it's your realized consciousness. Since God made itself known to you, that's the one consciousness. And it doesn't matter what's being entertained in that guy's mind. Remember, we're given the mysteries of God, and the Pistis Sophia says, what, the mind and the body is just a contaminated consciousness, and whatever other people are experiencing of this world, of this flesh, the fleshly concepts of form and being, are not real. So we know the truth. That's the truth that makes us free, and we have to apply that to everybody, no matter who it is. So that's also following the principle of God. It doesn't matter what or who or anyone, you have to approach them as the I in me is the I in you. There's only one consciousness. And the more you do that, God will give you more of his grace, more of his knowledge, more of his mystical consciousness as well. Because God is a mystical living God. It's not, remember Isaiah the prophet, my thoughts are not God's thoughts and God's thoughts aren't my thoughts. They are totally different. <laughs> Now, now, that's beautiful literature, that's beautiful scripture. Yeah, but you have to apply it. And you can go further and say yes, and it's a truth too. Some yes, people and find you can it. Go further and do nothing about it. Like karma, if I do but good to see, others, I receive the good. The infinite way is. Uh, we're going deeper. Not interested primarily in teaching that or printing books about that, but insofar as is possible. Having, uh, if it's only in this age a few thousand people in the world, actually become living embodiments of that principle. How can they do it? Well, now, frankly, I can't do it for you, nor can the writings or the recordings do it for you. It is something that has to take place within your consciousness by an activity that goes on within you. In other words, you, first of all, must consciously realize, declare within yourself, yes, God is my individual being. God constitutes my being. God is the life of my being, the soul of my being, the spirit. God is the very substance of which even my body is formed. God is the only law governing me. Not laws of matter, not laws of food or climate or digestion. Not laws of medical belief or theological belief. Not laws of sin or purity. Not laws of anything. Only law, God. So that's another thing too in the, the master and the ministry that I preach here with the gospel. Is bringing yourself to nothing where you'll find out who you really are. That is the spiritual revelation of finding out your true identity. And that is your true identity, is one with God. And God will make itself known to you. That's what makes all these other material laws uh, subside. Because there's only one law. There's only one spirit. And being under that spirit 
means now your promise, the things that God is and God has. Uh, like in Psalm, uh, dwelling in the secret place of the place of the Most High, where none of these evils shall come nigh your dwelling place. Why? Because you abide in this secret place of the Most High, which is what? Prayer and being revealed the way. And being in this way, as Mr. Musashi says in his Doctrine of the Void, there is no evil. All there is is righteousness, wisdom, the way has truth, and the way has existence, and there's no evil within this void. There's no evil in spiritual consciousness. So that's another teaching that we're given as well. We're not under the laws of the modes of material nature, even uh, the laws of nature itself. We're only under the law of this spiritual transcendental consciousness, which is God. And not only that, the New Testimony, once you get that light, you'll be revealed who that light is. And that's the light of Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son in the Word, the transcendental Word. So this is what he's talking about, about now, even Brother Paul saying, coming out from under the law and being in grace and harmony with God is we're not in the material modes of nature anymore, not even mentally or physically. God takes us out of this creation while we're alive. And it's a process of being devoted to the Spirit of God. So it's a real acquisition. That's why the Bhagavad Gita even says to approach this with the utmost uh, sincerity and being sincere. And seriousness. <laughs> seriousness as well. So that's how God becomes the law. It isn't a good law and it isn't a bad law. It is just the only law there is. It's the transcendental being. Uh, it is a law of immortality, a law of eternality, a law of perfection, but it is a self-maintained law and a self-sustained law. Therefore, I have nothing to do but thank you, Father. See, when he says now we have nothing to do, that's the truth as well. All we do is maintain our relationship and contact by prayer and meditation. And this spirit, this transcendental consciousness, goes before us to live our life here. So this is, uh, you could say, like a, an evolutionary way of living. You could say this is like life only for the hardcores. If you want to put your faith in a transcendental consciousness to live your life, it's not just a transcendental consciousness. It's God. <laughs> so you can have God and his immortal, eternal life and law, grace. That's all the teachings of Brother Paul coming out from under the law and being into the grace and harmony of God. See, the, the spiritual teacher doesn't put it in those uh, words because he's not speaking from the uh, actual testimony of the gospel of Christ. But he's taught. You see, we're all taught. This is from this is like the wisdom of spiritual teaching and religion anyways. We're taught what this God does, its law, its grace, its function, and it promises a lot too to live our life for us in this world as well. This is transcendental consciousness, fourth dimensional consciousness. That's the meaning of it. And this is how we get it. That God is this infinite law of my being. Ah, but having done that, we have only taken a preliminary step. Because one hour from now, the temptation is going to be given to us. Oh, Vision like a problem. commercial. What? I just finished, I, I like watched this video today a little bit. I didn't even see any commercials. Where are they coming from now? Can I afford this? And you see, there is where the embodiment of the principle comes in. Temptations That's of the where world. living the principle comes in. You have to answer and say, certainly I can't. But I'm grateful that I never will be able to. And furthermore, I'll never be called on to. Since God is my being, and so God is the only one who has to be concerned with whether it can be afforded or it can't be afforded. And so God, if you can afford it, go ahead and have it. And if you can't afford it, let's not have it. I'll wait your decision. That's more about, again, denying yourself. Let's say if some things come in the world, can you just follow scripture when the master says to deny yourself, just pick up, keep following the spiritual way, and, and that's pretty much it. So even though temptations might come up in the world, even about... Uh, things that you might like, like gathering possessions, like even like a new comic book might come out. Something, it doesn't matter, a new phone, new shoes, new purse, 
Can you deny yourself and pick up the cross and follow me and follow the spiritual way? And even too, like my will, not my will, but your will, Lord, hallowed be thy name. Remember the Lord's prayer. So if things come up in your life about I, me, and mine, that's what the Bhagavad Gita teaches as well too, self-renunciation. That's what Jesus Christ teaches you. Deny yourself. You're like the rich guy that wanted to spiritual perfection. Can you give up all and follow me? So this is how Joel it had to put it in his time because in the 60s, there was like a metaphysical movement. And like he was saying before, people were upgrading their Fords into Cadillacs thinking that that was the plan of God. <laughs> that they're going to give them like their supermodel wives and running around in Lexuses with giant mansions. That's, that's people, you know, people had to come out of uh, a false teaching and, and Joel's teaching us that as well too because at the time, people were gravitating towards God for upgrading matter. Just, you know, a better home, a better job, a better, 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 better matter. And that's not what we go to God for. If you're tempted by the world, let's just say even if for, for something stupid too, like going out and wanting to eat something. Well, don't you have food at home? <laughs> you know, deny yourself and just go home and eat food. <laughs> that's, it's that simple at first. That's that's what I would teach someone too about self renunciation. Is buy go, give your money away to someone that you would spend on a lunch. Buy them lunch and go home and eat food yourself. Don't be lazy. <laughs> then will come the, the leading whether or not to have it. It doesn't mean, as many people believe in metaphysics, that they should go right out and charge everything between here and New York and say, oh, God is my father, so uh, I'm rich and I can have everything. Oh, it oh yeah. Mean, because God's my father. I can, not yet I can have all the, the crap in the world. Center that God, the infinity of the world, <laughs> is your individual consciousness. So you can put it square. You see, that's, uh, again, people practicing ill religion, Bhagavad Gita, hitting it home again, making up fake things, making up fake associations with what God, the Spirit of God does. You know, giving people Cadillacs and hot wives and fancy jobs. That's just ill religion. Again, I don't know who teaches these things. <laughs> But we're, I'm obviously not taught uh, any of those things. I'm taught the truth. So that's also what I've been led to with scriptures. After being uh, taught by the spiritual teacher for an X amount of time, the Spirit of God takes over, as the teacher promises, and then the Spirit of God starts leading one around, and it led me around to scriptures, and it just more expounded the teachings of God, and you could rely on scriptures because they've been made by God and God's devotees, people that are devoted to the Spirit of God and God putting them through the trials. So that's also too, we're treading on other people and it's not just other people, it's God's devotees that built up all this knowledge of Scripture, uh, especially Bhagavad Gita as well too, because it's all just devotees of the Lord asking, inquiring about life and uh, God gives them the answer. The Supreme Personality of God gives them a, <laughs> <laughs> he gives them the answers to everything. Just the same here. Same here. But you have to have really up to God and spiritual say, God, consciousness. This is your demonstration, not mine. It isn't a question of whether I can afford it or not. Just let's oh, see what you think about it. Maybe God can afford that, it for me then. then. My the father could afford a $10 million so mansion. Why not? Or certainly go right ahead. <laughs> and you'll be receiving no. your impulses from within. But that won't be duality, and that won't be proving that there is a God and a you. It will be proving that there is an interior part of you, which is God, while the exterior part is the Son of God. God yeah. the Father and God the Son of God. And the interior part, the Spirit, came with its teaching, the Word, Jesus Christ, and it tells the exterior part to deny thyself self-renunciation of all <laughs> like the rich guy give up all things for the inner spirit so uh the teaching is very explicit when it says you know you're not coming to me for material objects oh let's see if god could afford this oh let, here's more like male delusion what if what if some smoking hot girl just comes up to me oh well, let's see if god can get this Right, but 
that's you can't. It's deny thyself and pick up the cross. And it's not even like human memes either. Oh, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. No, that's just human ideas. God never implanted human memes into the Bible either. Like, oh, if you let one thing go, another one will just come up. No, that's not in the Bible. It's not in God's uh, knowledge and God's intelligence. So even if things of the world come, like just some smoking hot broad, right? Or some, some, some really attractive young woman. <laughs> right? Well, I'm going to now, sense gratification is like, like spider sense. It's like, oh my God, look at that one over there. You know, what am I going to do? Ask, oh God, can, can you get me that one there over there, please? Because of sense gratification. A bell went off in my head that's just, you know, has nothing to do with the Lord. It all has to deal with the flesh. And carnal allurements. Carnal desires. So we can't mix our carnal desires with, oh Lord, can you get me that over there? Because I'd really like a piece. Can't be doing that. We're not metaphysicians. Well, one. But God the Father is that invisibility of you, yep. whereas God the Son is the visible. <laughs> the stupid son. Of your being. <laughs> was so he, it is as if you were women and not money. To bank book and say, Can no. afford it? Deny thyself. That's what the son says. As well. being. <laughs> and say, Father, is this for us right now? Oh, yeah. And then wait, <laughs> and the impulse will come, yes or no. Hold on. Or, Instead of, see, that logic, right, even the spiritual teacher, we could kind of uh, put him on the spot. Because the true teaching of Christ, anyways, is just to deny thyself, not to say, oh, is, is this meant for me, yes or no, and we'll go into the you know, inner temple and have an answer. You know, it, it's all, Jesus Christ's answer is to deny thyself anyways. Bottom line, there is no yes or no with God. He gave us the strict teaching. That's why following the path, at least with Jesus Christ, he's much more strict because it just tells us to deny yourself and give up all for the kingdom of God anyways. You know, not to be like, oh, should I buy this, you know, $2,000 shirt, Lord? Is it meant for me? I, uh, deny thyself or, or anything you're, you're thinking about to improve or to upgrade, especially material matter. You can't just like, oh, let's leave it up to God to see if he's gonna buy me this $2,000 shirt or he's gonna bring in this attractive young female. Yeah, okay, how about we just deny thyself, pick up the cross and follow the spirit within. <laughs> we can't be, uh, you know, bargaining with the Lord. Or it may not come in that form. It may come in the form of someone coming for help. And then you say, oh, I haven't enough understanding. And that's true, too. And you can be grateful for that. And also grateful for the next thing that you never will have enough understanding to help anybody oh, even with a little headache. Because help doesn't just come through your understanding. That would be a merciless God that would leave this world at the mercy of your or my understanding. <sighs> So when this temptation comes, do I have enough understanding? You say, no, and I don't ever expect to have. Now let's go within. And again, you go within, and you realize, Father, this help has to come as the activity of the Christ, not as my understanding or what I know or don't know. It has to come as the activity of the Christ, and I am a willing instrument. I'm willing to be still and let you be God. Yes, that's his teaching as well, too, is to be still and know I am God. But that's also the teacher teaching of Joseph Benner as well. And that's more for the advanced pupil as well. That's now like you're in the rough. You're kind of in the Job experience. You've been afflicted. You, you know, a couple weeks went by, a couple months went by, maybe a couple years went by. Now you bared the trenches but now you've been given a lot of instruction, a lot of knowledge, and you should have applied that knowledge enough to say now to be still and know I am. Until, you know, God makes itself known to you as well too. That's also part of scripture. It's not like the spiritual teacher talking out of, you know, just his experience or whatever. It's actually scripture for God to make itself known to you and God to lead you in this life as well. So I guess we'll call it quits for the meantime.
these bird brains are killing themselves out there. But uh, that's what the world's like without the Spirit of God anyways. Just you know, a lot of people that don't have any solutions to problems. Uh, the world is the way it is for a reason. And you have to get the Spirit of God not to change the world. God, God forbid if, <laughs> if you left it to humanity to change the world. That's what the Gospels are all about. And you have to get under the Spirit of God. God made this scenario for human existence for a reason, for us to have faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, he's getting ready for the second coming anyways. Remember, it's all about plucking out that evil. That's God's also plan for individual consciousness. Plucking out the evil, the fear that exists within every one of us from the first fall of grace. And that's cleaning the contaminated consciousness. Thank you guys, whoever's sticking it in this long. Until next time, take care.